time once again to do some videos for Visual Basic. In this set of videos, I want to talk about decision statements, primarily the if statement. This is Mike Kent, and I'm talking about my class, ITSE 1331. I've got three examples. I'm going to do one video on each example. I'm going to start out with this one, if statements with radio buttons and checkboxes. I have already downloaded this, and I have unzipped it, so I'm going to drill down open the project up so we can take a look at what this program does. So this program has four radio buttons in a group box for RAM and then four checkboxes for accessories. Now I put the checkboxes in a group box although that was not necessary because as you remember checkboxes can all be turned on or all be turned off. Radio buttons have to be in a group and only one of the group can be turned on. Now, I didn't have to put them in this group box. I could have just put them on the form. But just to make things look pretty, I put both of them in a group box. So let me run the program here. I'll hit the Start button up here, show you what it does. Let's pick uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM on this computer we're going to buy and a Blu-ray burner. Total price, $155. If I drop the RAM down, turn off the Blu-ray, it's only $40. If I decide to get a DVD dual layer burner and a Blu-ray burner, it's $150. So you can see I can have multiple checkboxes on, but only one radio button. So I'm going to close the program, and let's open up the code window. I'm going to double click on the command button, total price. And right off the bat, you can see I've got three variables I've dimmed. Desk RAM cost, which is going to be the, their choice, whatever they picked for RAM, the accessory cost, and then finally the grand total. Now, when you're doing radio buttons, only one of them can be turned on. Therefore, you're going to use a nested if structure so that it doesn't check for all four buttons. As soon as one of these conditions is true, it will skip all the rest and I'll show you that in the debugger. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the checked property of each radio button. So this radio button is rad 512 megabyte dot checked. Is it equal to true? If it is, the cost is $10. Now as soon as one condition is true, it won't go on to any of the else's. So if, if they picked 512 megabytes for whatever reason, talk about a very poorly performing computer, it's going to skip right on to the end if. Now, the other thing you'll notice is I have a last else that if none of the buttons is turned on, it'll just pop up a message box and say, please choose some RAM. Now, one other thing I want to show you here is the checked property is true or false. And I'm doing a little bit of extra work when I say this right here. When I say rad 512 megabyte dot checked equals true, I could instead just say if rad 512 megabyte dot checked. Because whatever is between the if and the then of the if statement just has to evaluate to true or false. The dot checked property is a true false. So I, I can do it this way this is a little bit more understandable to beginning students. I'm saying if the check property is equal to true, then do something. But it's equivalent to this. So on all four of these, I could just say I could do it like that. And the same thing on the check boxes, because the check boxes have a check property. Now I'm going to hit undo and put it back the way it was on all four of these. And I'm then going to uh, run the program. But first, let's take a look at what we do for the checkboxes. Since the checkboxes can be turned on in any combination, all of them or none of them, we have to have four separate if statements. So I'm checking on the first checkbox, and if it's checked, they picked a DVD-ROM. $10. So that's I set the accessory cost to $10. Now for the DVD burner, if that's set to true, I want you to notice one subtle difference here. I say desk accessory cost 
plus equals $35. I can't say equals $35 because that would replace the $10 that might have been put in there before. So for the first one, I can say equal because all variables start out at zero. So then if I put the 10 in it, now I've got that cost. But for the next three, I've got to say plus equal to get a running total of those costs. Now finally, after I've gone through all these if statements, I'm going to take the RAM cost and the accessory cost, add those together to get to total. And then I'm going to put the total into the label total dot text. I'm going to put it in the labels so the user can see it. I'm going to turn it back into a string. Currency format, two decimal places. So I'm going to come up here to the top and right on this if statement, I'm going to click in the gray bar and put a breakpoint, run the program. So let's pick 8 gigabytes of RAM, a DVD burner, and a Blu-ray burner and say total price. So now you see my code has paused just before running this line of code. Now if I look at dot checked, we can see it's false. So what I want to do is step through this with the debugger and if I go up to the debug menu, you'll see it says step over is F10. So I want to use F10 to step through my code. Now your compiler it might be F8, so always check your debug menu. It's a configuration setting. So I'm going to say step over, step over, okay, the rad 4 gigabyte button is false. Is the rad oh yeah button set to true? Yes it is. So that's $80. Now it hits the end if. It's going to go on to the first checkbox. Are they buying a DVD-ROM? That's set to false. It's going to skip over the then part of that statement. It's going to go on to the second if statement. So the burner is set to true. It's going to add $35 to zero. Now we have $35. It's going to check for Blu-ray reader. That's false. It skips over that one. Then finally, we get to the last one, Blu-ray burner. That's set to true. It's going to add another $75. So now my accessories is $110. If I come down here, my RAM is $80. My accessories is $110. My total is $190. That is what I'm going to put into the label. So if I tell my program to continue, now you see the label says $190. That is the major things we need to understand about if statements when using radio buttons and when using checkboxes. You've got to write your if statements differently. Another thing with this nested if is it's, it's almost like you're writing a separate else and then a new if statement, but if you do it on the same line, it combines it into this else if keyword. So it's much more compact, and I have another example where I'll show you more of that. Now I'm going to come up here, turn off my breakpoint, so my program will run without pausing anymore. So we can see this wonderful program, we'll just go with four gigabytes and a Blu-ray burner and get a nice little computer. So those two options cost me $115. That's all I got on this one.